Routers are layer 3 devices, and they're typically much more complex than switches, which are layer 2 devices. Remember, when we talk about layer 2 and layer 3, we're talking about the layers of the OSI model. Layer 2 would be the data link layer, forwarding based on the MAC address. Layer 3 would be the network layer. Routers are layer 3 devices because they forward based on the network layer information such as the IPv4 or IPv6 address. Let's take a look at how traffic flows through routers on a network. We'll use this very simple scenario. And in this scenario, we have a client on the left-hand side who sits on network 10.88. On the right-hand side, we have a server sitting on network 10.99. Now, the client most likely does not connect directly into the router. Most likely from the client, there is a switch. But we know that switches don't affect the network address or the MAC address of packets as they flow through that switch. From the switch, we would connect up to one of the ports on the router in the middle. Our client's IP address is 10.88.0.1, and the hardware address will just say it's MAC address A. From another port on that router, we would have a cable coming out, and our server probably doesn't sit directly on the router. There's probably a switch in front of our server. So we'll connect from the switch over to our email server in this example. Our server has the IP address of 10.99.0.2 and hardware address D. Let's take a look at what happens as the traffic flows through the stack from TCP IP down to the network interface card and then comes up to the first port in the router and then out the second port in the router heading on its way over to the server. As the packets flow down through the stack, the packet will go out on the network from the client's hardware address and the client's IP address, but it will be addressed to the hardware address of the router on the local network. In this case, the hardware address is B. Once the router picks up that packet, it's going to look to see, is the packet destined to me, the router? If not, the router knows that it needs to forward the packet. There will be error checking capability in there as well, and there may be filtering as well. The router will look up at its routing tables to see, do I know anything about the target network, network 10.99? And if it does have the information in its tables, then it will forward the packet out its network interface card that resides on the next network, or that resides on a network that will take it to another router along the path. Once the packet travels out from the router's second network interface card, we can see that the MAC address information of the packet has changed. And this is really important to understand. When traffic travels through a router, the MAC address information will always change. If it doesn't change, then your router is acting as a switch. And there are some routers that have layer 2 functionality and may do that. But anytime we see that MAC address change when it goes through a router, we know that it's been forwarded based on layer 3 information. After this point, the traffic will be sent to the hardware address of the server on the next network. Traffic will come up through the stack to IP address 10.99.0.2. During this process, the router will also decrement the IP header time to live value. Or if you're working with IPv6 networks, it would be the hop limit field that's changed. It's important to understand that as packets travel through a router, that MAC address information is changed. Let's take a look at this scenario. And this is often a question that comes up from network analysts. Let's say we have a network analyst and the analyst is running Wireshark on, let's say, the client on the left-hand side. So here, they've got Wireshark running. And they want to get the hardware address of the email server. They can't get the address by looking at traffic coming from the server to the local client, however, 
because remember, if the email server's hardware address is D over here, as the traffic travels up through the switch, we know that it will not affect the addressing. But when it goes through the router, the MAC header is going to be stripped off and a new MAC header will be put on from the router's hardware address. So we would see the packet that's coming from the email server with a source MAC address of B, if that's what the router's MAC address is on that port. And the destination MAC address would be A. So that's one of the things to watch for. You can only get the hardware address of devices that are on the local network. When you're listening in with Wireshark passively to all the communications, and you're paying attention to the hardware address information, you're only seeing information on all the devices on the local network. I'd like to show you what this looks like inside of Wireshark when we look at a packet before it's gone through a router and after it's gone through a router. I have two trace files up. The top one is called router-side A, and this is the packet before it's gone through the router. And the one on the bottom that we're seeing is from a trace file called router-side B, which is what the packet looks like after it's gone through the router. If we look at router side A before it's gone through the router, we can see that this packet is coming from the client's MAC address to a Cisco MAC address, and that would be the local MAC address of the Cisco. That's the interface that's on the client's network. Once the packet has gone through the router, we can see in this case, this comes out of the other interface on the router, the external interface on the router, and it looks like in this case it's going to another router. It's going to a Juniper router. So the MAC address information has been completely changed because the packet has gone through the router. The IP address information, however, stays the same. So we can see it's from the 1.71 client to a server whose address ends in 242.165. Down below we see the same IP address information. Now the router will change something else as well. If we expand the IP header in the top packet, and we go down to the time to live field, we can see that when the packet left the client, it had a time to live value of 128. Let's look at the packet after it's gone through the router. The router should decrement that field by one. And there we go, we see a time to live of 127. So we can tell when a packet has gone through a router. Sometimes we can simply look at the MAC address and we can see some recognizable bytes at the beginning of the MAC address and Wireshark will translate that and we can see things like Cisco and Juniper. We also can look at the time to live value and compare the source packet to the target packet after it's gone through a router and we can see that the time to live value has been decremented by one. In the next section we will look at how network address translation boxes or firewalls or proxies affect the data flow.